Hello there, my name is Pavel Steinmach and now we will unveil the top news of recent days. At the beginning I want to tell you how this morning was for the residents of Kyiv and the suburbs. We woke up at 2.30 am because of the threat of kamikaze drone strikes and alarm started. Till 4 am drones attacked the capital as a result of which debris fell on an open area. During this time the Air Force of Ukraine reported the flight of Russian strategic aviation to the launch borders. They have to fly for almost six hours to launch their rockets, so our military command and the citizens as well know about Russian plan an hour before. Why Russia is acting in this way, I'll tell you a little later. So we knew that in an hour and a half there would be a large rocket attack. We will sleep well in such conditions. Most of us did not. So already at six o'clock the most massive attack of this winter began. According to the Ukrainian general staff, the Russians launched 83 cruise missiles and 10 ballistic hypersonic missiles Kinjau. Land-based ballistic missiles were also used, Iskander's S-400 and S-300, for shelling frontline and border towns. Forbes estimated that Russia spent approximately $620 million on shelling Ukraine. Our titans from air defense shot down 72 cruise missiles. Our Air Force, anti-aircraft gunners, mobile firing groups, thank you guys. And I thank everyone in the world who help us. Patriot, Iris T, NASAMS, each of the systems has already saved at the very least hundreds of lives. And for every life taken, Russia will be held accountable. But the most interesting thing is something else. According to the Russian general staff, I quote, the Russian armed forces used up to 40 drones. They launched missiles from 20 strategic aircrafts and also carried out missile strikes from fighter jets, including hypersonic kinjals. This time there were more than 11 of them, in total more than 110 missiles. And of Russian lie. That is, almost 30 missiles simply did not reach Ukraine. That is, more than a quarter of the launched missiles simply did not fly. Among them is the one that fell in the village in the Voronezh region of Russia. At first, Russian propagandists, including Skabeva, called it as Ukrainian shelling, but then they realized that settlement is too far away from Ukraine and admitted that the Kremlin called it an emergency descent. By the way, this is not the first time such an emergency descent has occurred. In May, two FAB-500 bombs was landed in Belgorod. And here I go back to what I was talking earlier about long flight to launch missiles. Do you know why the Russian bombers should fly during six hours to launch missiles? Because the percentage of unsuccessful launches is so high that they do it over the Caspian Sea so that no one known about Russian greatness. And they cannot keep the planes closer because of their danger from the strikes on the airfields. We have already destroyed more than one plane on the ground with photo and video evidence, and not just talks, as it is in the Kremlin. For example, today Russians killed nine generals, four batteries of air defense systems, five patriots, their houses with ammunition of Storm Shadow missiles. But in fact, 91-year-old woman died as a result of shelling in Kharkiv, and an 86-year-old woman died as a result of shelling in Kyiv. In Kyiv, a high-rise building was seriously damaged by a Russian attack, more than 150 people were injured. Private residential buildings and a church were damaged. And in the suburbs, private and high-rise buildings, businesses and warehouses were damaged too. Currently, two dead and 16 injured are known. In Kharkiv, it also strike over residential areas. There are one dead person and 45 wounded, five of whom are children. As a result of the attack, more than 250,000 people lost electricity. And now almost all of them have had their electricity restored. In the Kropovnitsky district, fragments of the rocket hit the yard of one of the households, creating a four-meter-wide ravine. However, measures to eliminate the consequences are ongoing, so the number of victims may increase. I would like to remind you that only yesterday there was a day of mourning in the capital for those who died as a result of the attack on December 29th. The bodies of the victims of the Russian terrorist attack were found within three days after the rubble was cleared. As a summary, during the last five days, Russia has launched more than 430 missiles of various types and attack drones over Ukraine. Does anyone still remember the tesis 
that Putin wants a truce. But you know, what Russia is doing now is not terrorism. After all, terrorism is when a group of people took over a bank and demanded several million dollars and a helicopter. In this case, what Russia is doing is a genocidal war of destruction. The top of the terrorist plan is a one-time action with a planned withdrawal, while the Russians now have a long-lasting war planned for the destruction of Ukraine and its citizens. It already continues for 10 years and no one knows when it will end. And all Russian actions are not included in the definition of terrorism. But I will say that Russia will not stop at Ukraine. Although currently only the Baltic countries and Poland understand this danger maximum clearly. We are preparing to produce more weapons. We already have a clear schedule for our international work in January. We are working with our partners on solutions needed by every Ukrainian soldier, our entire nation, our state. And this decision will be strong. However, many do not believe that a war between Russia and Western countries is possible at all. Like it is the Third World War right away, so Putin won't dare. Therefore, in the worst case, he will conquer everything around him that is not under the umbrella of NATO, and then it will be like during the Cold War, an armed but peaceful confrontation between the two blocs. But it won't be like that. The fact is that Putin is not fighting for Ukraine in Ukraine. He fights for what the world will look like in the 21st century. Therefore, if Putin conquers Ukraine and forces the world to accept it, everyone will live much worse. Even if Putin's army does not attack your countries, first governments will be forced to spend much more money on defense. Secondly, the whole world of global politics will turn into a geopolitical jungle in which only the right of the strong will do and there is a continuous hybrid war of everyone against everyone. Sadly, in such a world we will have to forget not only about political but also about economic stability. World markets will always be in a frenzy because threats of destabilization can be expected anytime and anywhere. For example, in the Middle East, in the Red Sea, in the China Sea, in South America, almost any country in Africa. Therefore, the loss of Ukraine will be a global loss for the entire Western civilization, because it will be the end of the world of rules in which the civilization was able to achieve unprecedented prosperity. And vice versa, the loss of Russia in this war is our only chance to save this familiar world of ours. Our common interest is to achieve this together. And while the issues of the future of Russia are being resolved, the Russians are preparing for a new life with that Tsar, who will be re-elected in absolute election. But immediately after it, we can expect a new wave of mobilization, especially since changes to the law on conscription have been adopted. At the same time, it was absolutely in the Russian style. Authorities promised to change the conscription age from 18 to 27 to 21 to 30. And in the end it turned out that now it is from 18 to 30 years old. And then Russians can expect a rise in prices, because inflation is growing and all the money is currently going to the war. As a result, the Russian ruble is in the top three most depreciated currencies. And we can expect more repression. Before the new year, two poets who read their Pacific poems on the square received real terms. By the way, the question of Putin's legitimacy after the election remains open. After all, he has been in power for 24 years. And PAC recommends not to recognize its legitimacy. The question of the attitude to the war also remains open. After all, the majority of the population is already in favor of negotiations and not in favor of the continuation of the war. But it doesn't work like that. You cannot attack someone and when you are bored, just leave without consequences. There will definitely be consequences. This is now felt by the residents of Belgorod, who suffered as a result of the work of Russian air defense on December 30th. This was felt by the residents of the village in the Voronezh region, on whose heads a Russian rocket fell today. This is felt by the sailors of the Black Sea fleet. 
who are forced to either relocate from occupied Crimea to Novorossiysk or expect strikes from Ukrainian surface drones every day. And we Ukrainians are waiting for the reparations and court proceedings against Russian authorities. That concludes today's video. Thank you for watching. Stay updated, comment, like and subscribe to our UETV English channel for more news from Ukraine. Your support really matters. Goodbye.